Hey everybody, welcome to the For Knit Sakes channel. My name is Allison and I am coming to you from El Paso, Texas. Today is Thursday, August the 3rd and uh, today's probably going to be a, a relatively short episode. I don't have a lot of finished objects but I do have a lot of new cast-ons and a lot of Q knitting that I have made a list for recently. I'm very much a list person. It makes my life a little bit more simple when I can see it all in, um, usually on paper. I do have my cue on Ravelry that I usually keep up to date on things that I want to do. There's only maybe like five or six things. I favorite a lot of stuff and organize them by where the accessory or garment is worn. So like I have a hat, a hat folder, hands folder, um, socks folder garments and stuff like that. So, but thank you so much for stopping by. If you are new, welcome to my podcast. And if you are returning, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Um, there is a Ravelry group and I'll put the link down in the bar below. And if you want to find me on Instagram, it is for knit underscore sakes. And on Ravelry, it's all one word for knit sakes. And it's the number four, not spelled out. Super easy to find me. Um, Instagram's usually just filled with knitting stuff and occasionally photos of um, the boys. So I live in El Paso with my husband and my two sons, Levi and Oliver. Levi starts school soon. Oliver stays at home for another year. And the channel's all about knitting, crocheting. I haven't done cross-stitching in a really long time, but I, I, I do that. <laughs> and I sew every once in a while. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And we'll just dive straight into the 300 writing prompts. If you haven't been here before, let me put my coffee down. Um, I got this book here at Barnes and Noble a while back and um, it asks you questions to answer. It's supposed to like help with like creative writing and stuff, but I thought it would be a really good like journal for my kids to have for when they grow up so they can see what answers I've had. So this week I actually asked this on a Facebook group that I am an admin for and it's a uh, what is something you would like to see invented that would make your life easier and a lot of people had really good responses but mine would be a self-driving car because then I could multitask. I feel super anxious when I drive in the car especially with the kids because they're constantly asking for attention and to look at something Levi understands that when I'm driving that I need to pay attention, but Oliver still doesn't quite understand. He's still asking me to look at things constantly while we're driving. So I feel super distracted sometimes when we're driving and where we live in El Paso, it takes like a good 20 to 30 minutes to get to um, like the grocery store that we frequent a lot. There is one down the road, but we go to, we go to Sprouts, which is kind of across town. So a self-driving car would probably ease my anxiety a little bit as soon as I would get used to it. And I know that they do exist, but they're super duper expensive. <laughs> so I don't see us owning one anytime soon. And I think they're only available in certain parts of the world. I don't know. I haven't done a whole lot of research. So we will jump straight into finished objects and I only have two. And one of them is my All About That Brioche Shawl by Lisa Hans, Maliha Designs. And I put this in the her spring to summer knit along. I didn't win anything, but um, I did it on the last day and she did like the big prizes based on how many people liked your or loved your photo on Ravelry. So I only had 10 because I did it on the last day and there are people that were finished much earlier. So they got obviously more likes because their picture was around for a lot longer than just the last day. So a very simple, straightforward pattern. This was done with loops and thread wool like because this is for my mom and she frequently talks about how wool bothers her and so I didn't want to take any chances and so this is 100% acrylic yarn. It has really good drape. It's a light fingering though so um, just kind of put that into consideration. The shawl probably would have been a little bit longer and a little deeper had I um, done it with like a little bit thicker fingering weight but I think it'll work really well for her just to kind of wear either kerchief style and it looks really cool like this I'll probably make another one for myself at some point I just don't know what I would make it out of or she can wear it stuck 
<laughs> or she can wear it just around her shoulders. She's always really cold. That's kind of like what I know my mom for. I'm starting to turn into that because I want to make like all the shawls and the little shrugs and stuff. I think it's really cool. I just like the how simple it is. Just garter stitch for a whole bunch to start out with. Then you brioche, two color brioche, and then you switch the color that you do first for the first um, row because brioche is all done t double. And then you finish with your second color. So um, I'll probably just steam it since acrylic doesn't really block out. It's not gonna get like the magical properties of soaking it in the sink and and blocking it like wool does but um I still might just wash it anyways but I would have to get a different wool wash because mine smells and my mom would probably have a reaction to it but it's done and now it's saved for Christmas knitting or Christmas gifts so now I have two gifts for Christmas that are done and taken care of so I'm really excited about that the other one was the arctic shawl that I test knit for Nordic stitches a while back and that one's finished for my mother-in-law. The only thing is I think I'm gonna take out the bind off and I'm gonna put on a an I-cord bind off on the end. But I can do that whenever, that'll take me like an hour. So my second one is my Project Linus blanket. I do donate blankets to Project Linus. It is a group, I think it's national, I don't think it's international, but it's a group where they collect blankets to donate to local hospitals. Um, I think we also donate blankets to older children in like intensive care units and stuff. But um, I think they said they got 107 blankets last month, but the next meeting is this weekend. So I have this one and the one that I showed last time. I still have to weave in all the ends. I usually wait until the last day to do it. But this blanket I did red heart yarn and a bunch of different colors Levi helped me pick them out so they're I really actually like like this blanket a lot so I'm gonna speak in between the the holes in the blanket right now so it's just a regular granny square blanket it goes round and around and around um I did it in this bright green here this very great I think it was called banana flower banana something I just remember Levi picked it out because he really liked the color and then he laughed when he um when he heard what the name was and then this just navy blue which I used up all but this much. I didn't even cut the, the tail. That I ended on the round with this much left and it was a full skein of Red Heart. And then I had this leftover light blue from a previous corner to corner blanket that I had donated for Project Linus. And it fits the 40 inch minimum for blankets donated to the project. I like to try to do two blankets a month. I think I might go down to one, one full crochet blanket and another fleece blanket that you just do like the border on because that one doesn't take me very long. I need to order the tool that you use to punch all the little holes around. I think you can just order them on Amazon or I might be able to find it at Joanne. I'm not really quite sure. I don't know if you heard that. We have a dirt pile there's um somebody just rode a dirt bike across and behind our house we have it's supposed to be for like fire safe if a fire breaks out in the neighborhood there's spaces in between sections of the neighborhood so there's less likely for a fire to travel because it's obviously really dry we live in the desert um but people like to ride their dirt bikes back and forth independently somebody must have the day off riding their bike so okay that's all i have for finished objects super fast right now, I cast on a lot of projects in the last two weeks. I've been very, very busy. My queue has gotten a little bit smaller, but as soon as I cast on a few projects, then I, I added more to my queue. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of what I cast on first. I talked about, well, let's talk about my shrug first. So I bought a kit, the Bin Gulbane Shrug Kit from Black Sheep at Orenco. It's a store in Oregon. I ordered it online because Christy Glass Knits showed it on one of her haul videos. I think it was her sample it haul that she got from TNNA. And so I wanted to buy it and I cast on, this is what I have left of the first ball. This is Irish Bar Fight. I'll try and get a good color. That's pretty good, but the tweed is really, really pretty. You'll see it a little bit more in the cable. So 
you knit the cable first and then you pick up stitches surrounding the cable band that you do. So I knit, oh, that shows really well. It's a little bright, obviously, but this is the cable band and I already picked up my stitches to do the bottom part. I'm trying to get a good pic, good, good view of the color, but it's kind of blurry. It looks black, but it's dark purple with tweeds with like blue. There's some olive green, pinks, bright pinks, light pinks. If I may, if I hold it back here. No, now you can't even see it. I'm a little sad. I didn't think about how dark the yarn was that you're not really going to be able to see the cable unless you're really close up. I'm hoping it looks better when everything is all finished. So I still have to do the big stockinette section here down to the, the bottom and it just has a, a little border on the side so I guess it doesn't roll. And then you pick up stitches on the top which is going to be this color. This one is, oh it doesn't say on the thing does it? I think it's Rocky Paths. It's, a, it's in my Ravelry. Um, I don't know if it's in my stash or if it's on the project page but I have it there. This is Studio Donegal Soft Donegal Tweed. It comes in 100 grams. There is a non-soft version. I'm not really quite sure on the softness difference between the two, but the non-soft version comes in 50 gram balls, and these are 100 gram skeins. So I have one more of the purple, the Irish Bar Fight, to finish off the bottom, and then I have two to do the top, and it's just a pretty eyelet section. I'm gonna fold this in half. So that's what it's gonna look like. So the cable band stocking it on the bottom and then eyelets on the top. And that's the Ben Gulbane Shrug by Tina Johnston, I think is the one that wrote it. She's she's part of, one of the owners of the shop and she has a, a Ravelry page and everything. But I update my, my um, project pages so you can find all the information there. So that one was really fun. The cable took me a while to get a hang of the chart. I've only done chart knitting only once or twice and the last time it was knit in the round so I didn't have to worry about reading back and forth on the chart. So this one I had to worry about making sure I was in the right direction but by the time I got through maybe like four or five repeats I had remembered and I didn't have to move my um, I do a post-it note instead of highlighter tape. I'll peel it off and use it above where I'm at on the chart. So if you don't have highlighter tape, you don't feel like buying something new, use post-it notes because they stick for a pretty long time. And I wrote my chart, my, I drew out the chart and the directions for what the stitches meant. So it helped me and I color coded it. That always really helps too. So if you have a chart that you're really super intimidated by, sometimes highlighting the stitches, because usually there are across like three or four stitches for doing the cables, depending on what kind of cabling is done. If you highlight it in different colors, it makes life so much easier because then my brain sees the colors and remembers the stitches as opposed to just seeing what the symbols are. But that's the way my brain works. But if, you ha if you're intimidated by cables, I would highly recommend doing that. The sock pattern that I did last year for Tour de Sock was already highlighted. So when I printed it out in color, everything was done. And I think, gosh, there was like eight different cables. And it was going really fast by the time I kind of got the hang of it. So that's my suggestion if you're trying cables. But that cable was pretty simple. It was only across 20 stitches. It wasn't a whole sweater by any means. I don't know if I'll ever be brave enough to do a whole sweater. Maybe... I'll adapt like a flax light and do like a, a cabled panel down the down the sleeve as my first first one so my next cast on I had been talking about this for a while but it's the second Avenue shawl by Amy Miller and I cast it on and it's rolling really really bad right now and I'm hoping that blocking it will fix it and I, I looked at the project pages for others projects and a lot of people are having the same issue you cast on and you make this scalloped edge and the scalloped edge is rolling the worst and then it's stuck in that for a really long time so then the sides are rolling and I'm really hoping blocking will fix some of it because like right now you can't even see this but there's the scallops it's kind of hard to show it's a really big there's a lot of stitches for this shawl it's gonna be a schlinket. 
and it's going to be lovely. So the first color I have here is Anzula Wash My Lace, which I'm, I held double. I don't know if you can tell that I held double. Sorry for my, my kids. <laughs> I'm panting. <laughs> and then this is Paratanvola. I forget the color number. It's on my project page. And then this is Island Yarns Siam Siam. And so I'm working on the stripe part right now. If you look on the, um, the pattern page, there's skinny stripes and then you do another big section. And then I think I go to a different color after that with some eyelets in it. I color coded my, my pattern because she do, does a little schematic on the side. So I colored it because it took me a really long time to figure out which order to do my my colors so I really like how all these colors just really match up these turquoises match up really well with the speckling that's in the Peretz and Bola yarn so and then the purple here matches a purple that's going to be later on in the shawl like a big section of it it's um Peretz and Bola as well and I'm pretty sure it's the same exact dye color but it's so pretty so far it's just this is one of the things I sit and I I watch TV. I have a lot of projects that are stockinette flat, so it's a lot of knitting, then purling, knitting, then purling. And that's not my favorite thing to do, but I'm surprisingly getting a lot faster with the purling. So, Second Avenue Shawl by Amy Miller. Really fun knit. If you want something that's like a schlanket and it, you want sort of mindless knitting and you don't mind purling, then I would highly suggest this one. So I'll show you the cakes just because they're so pretty next to each other. I showed this. This is um, one of the like the cover photos from a previous podcast. So so pretty. I love it. And two more works in progress. One's an old work in progress, and one is a new cast on. Um, I was looking for market bags, and I didn't want something. I wanted something that I could also use as a purse not just as a market bag for produce and groceries and stuff. So I went and looked on just, I think I just searched market bag on Ravelry and I found this really cool origami folded tote. It's called the Tolt, T-O-L-T, folded bag. And now this is on my Knit Picks needles, which the cords are not straight. So it's kind of hard to hold flat, but not very exciting. It's stuck in that knit flat. You can do, there's also a garter stitch one. So if you just want to knit, 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 you can do this too. But you just basically knit a really long rectangle and you fold it and mattress stitch it together to make a bag. It's really cool and I thought it would make a really cute purse when, if I want something that, if I want to change up my purse, but I don't want to buy a new one. <laughs> um, so I decided to make this. This is just some Rowan linen cotton blend it's a DK weight so I did have to adjust the pattern a little bit because it's written for bulky and I looked and saw like how many stitches others had cast on if they were using the same weight now I don't have quite enough probably to do the whole bag in this brown color but I have this leftover yarn from my walk in the wood shawl and part of it's Rowan so this is Rowan too it's like a blurple color so blue purple with some extra threads on it and I have some of this, oh man, I don't remember what this is called, but I have a lot more of this left over from my walk in the wood shawl too. And it's just been sitting since I finished that shawl in January. I finished it around the inauguration. My face tells that all. So um, I'm going to probably stripe this color because I feel like this one doesn't quite contrast enough. I feel like the dark stripes would be really cool. So the stripes are only going to show up on like one triangle of the back. If you go look it up, there's other people that have uh, striped it as well. So this one I only pull out every once in a while because the needles aren't my favorite. Now the Knit Picks needles are fairly sharp. You can see there, but the cords don't lie straight. And I actually have the cords hanging right now. They're not in the packages because I found when I coiled them up in the packages, it made it worse. So I have them hanging on a bar over by the window and it kind of, it doesn't stretch them out, but it makes them less curly. And the shorter ones curl more severe than the longer ones do. 
so keep that in mind if you're wanting to buy Knit Picks needles. They're really good, and I've had two sets. I've had the nickel set, and I've had the these uh, the rainbow set, but if you want to spend maybe 20, 30 more dollars, buy a Chiaogu set instead, because I like how straight their cords are. And their needles are fairly sharp, and I really like them. In fact, I just ordered um, a set, a size zero, 32 inch to do um, two at a time socks. But they're good starter needles. They're not bad by any means, but um, I've also had a lot of issues. I don't know if these do it. Yeah, right here. I can, you can see I can twist the needle and it's not the metal part that's moving, that's staying still. But the needles get a little loose inside the inside the thing. Now I have had needles come out and they have replaced them, so Nipix is really good about that. They won't replace them if like, they snap because I had one where the boys were playing on the couch and I left my knitting and <laughs> they landed on one and one just broke one of the needles. It was size five, so it was relatively skinny to begin with. But I've had, had ones where like I would pull my knitting and I pulled the needle out of the metal connector and they replaced it. So I don't know if they would do that now since I've had the set since years. I've had it since the summer of 2013. And so I don't know if they're gonna they would replace them or not, but it's not bothering me, it's not ripped out yet, and so we're good. Okay, one more new cast on for a sock and an old work in progress. And this will be a very short video this week. Now I got this idea from Caitlin of the Wool Jewel podcast to take self-striping or gradient yarns and stripe them into socks. And I'm trying to untangle some yarn here. I have this Noro sock yarn that is a singles that um, my husband picked out and he wanted me to make socks out of them. But I, after some research, knowing that singles aren't very good for socks, I didn't want to make an entire sock out of this, but it's really pretty. I forget what number it is, but it's also very thick and thin. You can see like that huge thick spot right there, but most of it's pretty thin. It's meant to be a fingering weight yarn. And I had bought this Patton's Croy for Oliver, and then he said he didn't want any more socks. So the coloring is very similar, where it's very autumn, greens, this like coppery color but I really like how bright this orange is and I wanted to make some socks out of it. I'm hoping that this Patton's Croy will kind of help with the singles so and my husband doesn't wear his hand knit socks outside of the house usually and so he's not going to get a whole lot of super big wear and tear out of them so I'm hoping that these would make some good, good house socks and I really wanted to knit a toe to toe pair of socks. So starting at the toe, knit, 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 put in your heel, cause I don't like, I don't like picking up stitches. I'm not very good at it. So knit in a short row heel, knit the leg, knit the cuff, waist yarn for a few rows, and then do cuff, leg, heel, foot, toe. So toe to toe sock. I got this idea cause somebody had posted it in a Facebook group and um, the pattern was like $5, but I know how to make socks. So I figured I can do it on my own and I was going to do contrasting yarn for the toes and the heels, maybe the cuffs. I'm thinking of doing the cuffs in this just because I have 80 grams of this. I've given some minis away in some, um, gift packages and there's only 50 grams of this. And I was thinking with the singles that it'll hold up well for the cuffs, but I cast on the toe yesterday in this Knit Picks Neon, wow, <laughs> Pickle Juice, it's just the Stroll Brights brand. It's all the highlighter colors. I bought a bunch of them around Christmas time when they were having a sale. So I cast on the toe using Judy's Magic Cast On, eight stitches per toe, or per, per needle, and then every other row increased, and then I did three plain rows of stockinette before I started the striping, but look at how this is knitting up. So you can, I started with the Noro and then switched to the Patton Square. And I'm doing these on nine inch circulars, but I'm thinking of switching to when I get the zeros that I ordered yesterday. I think they're coming on Monday. Um, and switching to Magic Loop, just because how thick and thin the yarn is, you can see Patton Square is kind of like a heavier fingering weight. 
versus you can see how thin but the thick parts of the Noro are making these really super squishy socks and I only increase to 60 stitches because when I do magic loop and when I do nine inch circulars 64 stitches are just too big especially for vanilla socks because there's nothing like pulling in the sock you kind of really need ribbing or some sort of passed over stitches to kind of get some tightness in them but I'm actually really excited about these. I don't think John is, so they might end up being my socks anyways, but I really love them so far. He really didn't want the highlighter, but I know that the nitpick stroll will hold up really well to wear, and I didn't have enough of the Patton's Croy to, to do more of that sock, because I could have done like heels, cuffs, and toes and stuff in this, and maybe had done the rest of it, but I really wanted to stripe and see what it was going to look like. So I think it's going to look really, really cool when it's done. I'll probably have to do about maybe like 60 rows before I put in the, the heel. I'll have to count some of my other socks that I've done on zeros and make sure I don't do like the same thing that I did on my last Patton's Croy sock where my, I didn't knit enough rows because I counted a sock that I had done on size ones. <laughs> and I only did I think 60 rows and then my toes were like this inside the sock. <laughs> And then I had to rip the toe out and then keep doing more decreases to, to fix it. Okay, my next pair of socks is another reason why I ordered a new pair or a new set of size zero circulars. Because these are just some, these are my skip socks, SKYP, free pattern on Ravelry. Um, with some yarn that I had over dyed, some coral yarn that I had dyed with some Wilton's gel icing. You can see the skip right here. Okay, back to my skip socks. My kids are just hollow legs and they're always hungry. I tried to feed them a whole lot of food and breakfast so I could hopefully get through a whole episode without stopping and it didn't work. Okay, so skip socks. I'm gonna show you the one without all the stitch markers on it. So, I put in for an afterthought heel on the back side. So I'm about maybe halfway through the foot these are marking, I think this is 20, 20 rows, this is 30. And now, since I'm not a huge fan of the skip pattern, I'm starting to space out how far apart the skips are. And so I did a little Google spreadsheet and I just put X's on the, the rows. So I'm starting to do every three, I think I'm about to the point I'm gonna do every four, and then every five rows, and then every sixth row until I get to 60. So I don't have a whole lot more, but I think it'll look kind of cool spaced out. And then I can see, I just don't like how the yarn was kind of changed up when you do that Passover stitch. I talked about it in my last episode because I really like how the stockinette is knitting up instead. I think I'm gonna over dye the last skein that I have, maybe with black and blue. And see what happens because this was doing red and blue which gave me that purple because the yarn was already pink and I really like how the red turned out dark but that's my afterthought heel right there and then the stockinette so I have about 25 more rows but I'm really excited to get a new core a new set of needles these needles are great but the cords kind of driving me nuts because it won't sit flat Xiaogu's are really good about having the cord sit flat and I'm really excited about doing that. And then I'm gonna actually do the afterthought heel and the toes in this Knit Picks Navy, which I used on my flax light sweater. So these will be super shorties and I'm hoping that they won't be too short. I only did a few rounds of the skip before I did the afterthought heel. And that's in my Nomadic Yarns Boston Terrier bag. Nothing else is in bags because I've been at home knitting. I usually bring my skip socks to to everywhere I go because it's such a small bag. I might bring this, but this is kind of big. This is this will still take up a decent amount of purse space. I'll have to figure that out. So those are all of my works in progress. I've been very busy casting on recently and I'm hoping to get a lot of these projects done. I'll have to hook a new Project Linus blanket because it is August and I want to have some for September. And 
now I am going to talk a little bit about what's in my queue and what I need to get done. I still haven't figured out what to do with this fall of Cascade Dolce. I think it's alpaca and silk. It's, dis it's discontinued, but we got a 50 gram skein of it at the Knitting Guild meeting that I went to in July. And we're supposed to knit something with it. We can use any beads or any other yarns or anything. And it's due in September. And I did find some fisherman's wool that I've had sitting around. So I'm thinking of some sort of slip stitch cowl or mosaic because between the two of these, it's I can I have a hundred grams. I can probably get a decent sized slip stitch, excuse me, cowl to give away. And the wool, the, the fisherman's wool, I don't find very super, very scratchy. It's definitely not as soft as the Dolce, but I think if I pair it, it's going to be okay. And if I, oh, but what if it bleeds? I'll probably snip a little, uh, a little piece off with this and stick it in some boiling water to see if it, if it bleeds because that would be terrible I didn't think about that so I'm gonna I'll test out that theory first but that needs to get done because that meeting is in September and so if I don't do that I might just do a little bandana cowl with just this I did find some purple but the purple is really close to the burgundy I think it's over here hold on yeah so like it's super close I mean it might make a really cute shawl and I don't know what this is I don't know what I bought or where it came from or maybe I could do like some sort of three three color mosaic or slip stitch something like do these two together and then then do these two together because this is pretty decent and then I can always go buy some more fisherman's wool if I want to but um, I'm also not trying to buy yarn now for the rest of the year because I splurged and I bought that Ben Gulbane shrug kit and I bought a bunch of yarn from my friend and now I still have plenty of yarn that I have projects in mind for. And that John wants me to knit some and then Christmas knitting and stuff for the boys. So I'm trying to really hard not to knit for the rest of the year or not to buy for the rest of the year. Um, I did buy some patterns because Stephen West and, um, uh, gosh, I always want to say Andre C. Knits, but it's not. It's uh, Dre Renee. So on Andrea Mowry had sales on their patterns. So I picked up some stuff for things that I want to knit sometime in the future, like the eyeball shawl from Stephen West. And I got the Enchanted Mesa sweater just because I really love the way they look, but I don't really quite have the yarn to knit either of those right now. So I bought those and I bought the Marley shawl, which um, my husband for some reason for months has been making fun of brioche, like how much I talk about it and, um, He's always, whenever I start talking knitting, he always just starts throwing out random knitting terms that he's heard me say because it just kind of goes over his head. Same reason like when he starts talking about drumming stuff. So if I start talking and he's like slip one yarn over, brioche, 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 and it's kind of like our inside joke thing. But now that he knows what it looks like after knitting that shawl, and he's heard a couple uh, podcasts talked about it, like um, the Anxious Knitter Joy is doing a brioche along which I'm waiting for the FO thread to open up so I can post my all about that brioche shawl. And um, he's wanted me to make him some sort of neck accessory in a brioche shawl. And last two months ago, I had technically broken my yarn, my no yarn buying diet by getting this, it's a messy skein right now, this skein of um, Stellina Green like this hunter green and I had two skeins that would pair really well with it and so I had already planned to knit a shawl or a, a neck accessory out of these two this is dream and Jilly it's an anniversary edition number 10 so it's a singles that I bought at um, a shop in San Antonio does it have what shop it is on there YAR I don't remember the name of the shop. There's only two or three in San Antonio anyways. We were visiting family over Christmas and we made a trip and I made, I purchased a couple skeins of fingering weight yarn initially for socks, but this is single. So I'm not going to make socks out of this, but 
It was between this and a Peretz and Volus cane that reminds me a lot of the Very Hungry Caterpillar book. And I'm going to knit the Marley shawl using these two. Now it's going to be for John. I don't know when he's going to wear it. So I'll probably end up wearing it even though these are definitely not my colors. <laughs> not my season by any means. These are more autumn colors and I'm a spring. So like think spring colors. But I'm really excited to do a full brioche shawl and I'm actually going to knit it for Caitlin of the Wool Jewels, her scary knit along, because I've never done a full brioche shawl. I've only done like sections of a shawl, like the exploration station and the one that I showed at the beginning of the episode. So my first full brioche shawl. Super exciting. So I need to skein that up or cake that up. It's already in the skein. Um, and get started on that sometime soon. And then to add to Christmas knitting, I have two pairs of socks to make, one for my mom and one for my dad. Uh, I had bought this yarn, Sheep's, Sheep's, I don't know, stone washed. It's cotton and acrylic, I think. Yeah, 78 cotton, 22 acrylic. I had bought this from a shop when we went to the Netherlands. It wasn't Stephen and Penelope, we had went to The Hague. So it wasn't Amsterdam and this was in the sale bin and I originally bought it because I thought I might make a, a little neck accessory of some sort for myself because this is pretty close to what my season is but instead I'm gonna make some socks for my mom because cotton and acrylic she won't have any weird reactions I think they might make some really cute house socks I think I might do the mercury sock pattern but adapt it for this weight which is sport weight, so I'll probably cast on about like 45 or 48 stitches. I forget how many stitches are in the pattern, if it needs to be in sets of fours or not. So I'm hoping I can get, yeah, I should be, if I do short socks, I'm not gonna make her long socks. So I'll probably just do two at a time, one from each ball, and then the leftovers are gonna go in my, my blanket. Cause my blanket I can do, I'm doing lace through sport weight and just change up the needle size when I do the cozy memories. And then the crochet granny square blanket that I will eventually start <laughs> is gonna be like that too. So, and now for my dad, I made him a pair of socks last year, just some plain vanilla socks with an afterthought heel from some Regia that I had bought in a set. Cause I had found it on German eBay six balls for 36 euro so it was about $40 for six 100 gram balls and it's all from the arabesque colorways but I don't know which one to knit for my dad I originally was going to do this one down here with like the purples and browns but I don't know the last one I did for him was gray and like an like an olivey green and I try, I'm trying to think of like what he wears. And I think this one would be really good, but it's like almost too similar to what, because it was like charcoal gray, light gray, and green. So basically it's the same thing, except this one has blue in it. Or I could do something completely different and make him blue socks, which I think he might like. I don't know. I'm sure he would like any of them. He once, I was having a really bad day once and he happened to be wearing them and he sent me a picture that he was wearing the socks at work and it made me, made me smile and made me happy for the rest of the day, so. A pair of socks for my dad. I already know size one needle, 68 stitches, afterthought heel. I just have to remember how many stitches are on the foot before I do the toe. But I don't know. Gosh, I, these are my last four balls of Regia. And I had so many when we moved from Germany. I'm gonna have to have a friend mule me some over by mailing some. I still have friends that are stationed in Germany and I've already asked if they can receive some packages and then mail them for me. <laughs> okay, two more things. We dyed that yarn, me and the kids dyed a bunch of Cascade 220 um, a couple months ago and I told them I would make hats for them. So that's on the queue to make. I'll probably do the barley hat by Tin Can Knits because I'll get the stockinette section and the garter stitch panel on the hat so this one is for Levi and then this one's for Oliver I really like this like blue and I think there's like some random purple that I don't know somehow managed to get it there there it is somehow managed to get on the skein so there's some purple 
spots right there. And then a little bit of purple, I think, got in here. Yep, just a little bit, not a whole lot. But this will be for Oliver. I really want to dye more yarn with the kids just because it's something fun and easy, but I need to order some some sock yarn for it, which means I need to knit some sock yarn to make some space for it. I'm not very good at making hanks. They always end up like super duper loose. Yeah, I can't do it. So barley hats for the kids. I'm trying to um, sell some extra stuff that I have sitting around the house so I can get a Chiagu four inch interchangeable set so I can do hats. I really wanna make a hat for a friend whose daughter is in her third relapse of cancer and I really would like to make her a hat because she just posted yesterday that she had they had to sh they had to cut her hair really short again and I really want to make her a hat so um, I'm not personally close with her but she's a really good friend of John's and I really want to make her a hat she's only nine maybe ten eleven I really should know better but it, it doesn't matter I really want to make her a hat so those are all on my knitting queue for right now I don't think I have anything else that's going and I've been trying to pair up some yarns to do another sweater and I just don't think I have enough I'm gonna have to order some yarn whether I do another fingering weight sweater or I do um, there's a crochet granny square free pattern from lion brand that I really want to make and then the enchanted Mesa I just don't have enough of all that weight excuse me of yarn and hopefully I can get it done soon okay I closed my notebook on accident and it has all my notes in it. Oh yeah, I was going to um, talk about my knitting mileage. I talked about it a few episodes ago and I haven't been keeping up with it. Um, I still have a lot of items to weigh, like a full page worth of, of projects that I haven't weighed yet to figure out how much meters I've done. But so far I'm at 9,102 yards. But I have some very large items like Levi's cardigan, my sweater, the granny square blanket that I just showed, and a couple of shawls. So some pretty high meterage, high yardage projects that I have not weighed in yet. So I'm at 9,102 and I'm betting with all of those it's probably close to 11. And that's what I've done since January. I'm really interested to know what what the total will be at the end of the year, especially with all these projects that I have in mind that I need to get done. <laughs> um, so if you just came for the knitting portion of the podcast, thank you so much for coming. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's been going on in life. I have a funny story of something that happened the other day. And um, thanks again for stopping by. If you're new, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'm never going to pressure anybody to do it. I like my little small corner of the internet and I enjoy that I do have a couple of viewers and then um, hopefully my kids can watch this when they get older and see that, you know, mom was brave and put herself out there on the internet in a positive, enlightening way maybe. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. Um, maybe get inspired to do a couple more projects in general and um, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Um, if you're here to talk about life, I have a rather funny story, or at least it's funny to me. Um, it's been raining cats and dogs multiple days a week. It's evidently monsoon season in El Paso where we get a lot of rain. And a neighbor that's a couple doors down has said we've gotten more rain this summer than she's seen since she's basically lived in El Paso for maybe five, six years. Her kid, her kid just turned five and they've been here since before he was born but not her whole life but we have this blow up pool it's not little by any means it's a 10 foot by 6 foot pool I think so it's huge I really wish I had bought a smaller one um, but pools and trampolines have really big issues of flying away during storms because it's super duper windy when it's usually really rainy and I had drained the pool to clean it and to post it to give away or sell basically for the amount of time that I, I've put into it because it's brand new it's like two months old but I'm the boys would rather play in the sprinklers anyways so it was empty minus 
like we have a big cinder block that I put in it to just weigh it down while it was raining but I put it on the wrong side of the pool and the wind picked it up and like completely flipped it over and it's raining so hard outside so I run outside thinking I'm like okay I'll just get a little bit wet but it takes a little bit more effort to move the pool to where it's gonna be safe and I have to pick up the cinder block and put it on the other side of the pool before I ran outside I asked John to go grab me towels or a towel so I could dry off when I got back inside so I move everything I am soaking wet skirt shirt and I wore my Birkenstocks outside and it took them two days to dry out I walk back inside and my husband hands me three hand towels and I looked at him like he was crazy I was like can I get a big towel please so I put the hand towels I use one hand towel I think to to dry my hair because you know short hair I don't need a big towel anyways <laughs> and he just starts laughing and I'm laughing too just because something like this similar similarly has happened before where I don't know if it's a guy thing or if it's just my husband that they underestimate how much towel you need to to clean up something I think there was another time like Levi started throwing up and he goes and brings me like a washcloth. <laughs> so um, it, it's, it's not a frequent occurrence, but it's just something I'm like, grab something bigger, please. So that was really funny to me. I don't know if it's funny to you or if you've had something similar happen in your life where you underestimate how much you, you need like a towel or like a container. I'm always constantly underestimating containers for cooking. I'll start cooking and then immediately realize I need a bigger boat to cook whatever I'm cooking for dinner. And that happens constantly. And then I'm mad because then I dirty two dishes instead of one. Or I try to make it work and then get stuff all over the stove. So that just happens unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that um, that's my funny story for the week we the weeds kind of grew into a jungle overnight with all the rain that we got and we were finally um, I fi we were finally adults and purchased a a weed whacker <laughs> it's hard to move with things because whenever you move with the military if you have something that has gas or oil in it you completely have to drain it and they have to be spotless to move like that includes grills weed whackers um, gas lawnmowers John had a motorcycle that we moved from North Carolina to Germany and everything has to be completely drained and completely clean before they'll pack it or they just won't pack it and then you either have to sell it or give it away before you move so we frequently don't have items like that or power tools just because you know I'm crafty in yarn ways but not in like do-it-yourself projects except I need to redo the kids dresser. It's a dresser my mom owned when she was a kid and it's that avocado green that was super popular in the 70s. So I need to borrow a sander from somebody, sand it down and repaint it. But I'm gonna wait till it gets cool. So probably in the fall when Levi goes back to school so I can do it while he's in school one day. So yeah, we, we cleaned up the backyard and now it looks clean. The boys can play in the sprinklers on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays because we get water restrictions in the desert here and you can get a pretty hefty fine if you're found watering your lawn outside of those days on the specific times. You can't do it after 10 a.m. or before 6 p.m. is when you can water your lawn. So in the middle of the day, which is why we bought the pool, but then the kids don't play with it. So I'm just going to buy a big Lowe's bucket and they have these water shooters that they can use with each other and we won't get in trouble for that. So Levi starts school in a couple weeks. We're just kind of fitting in a whole bunch of appointments and picking up immunization records before he needs to be registered. And I start school on the 21st. I am taking a child growth and development class with the local community college to renew my teaching license in Virginia. I figured that's my my best bet because we always said we would we would move back to Virginia if John were to get out of the military which is where I'm from we really like the area we're not really quite sure where we would move probably somewhere along the East Coast somewhere between Richmond and Hampton Roads area and so I figured my best bet is to renew that license in case we move back to Virginia 
if we went back to North Carolina, I have reciprocity that I can probably just renew my North Carolina license with the credentials I have for my Virginia license. So I'm taking one class this semester and one class next semester, and then I have to take a CPR AED class, and then I just have to send in $25 after spending lots of dollars <laughs> taking those community courses. So I'm hoping this semester is easy. I'm taking it all online so I don't have to worry about childcare. So I will have to pace myself to get things done in a timely manner. Um, other than that, everything is just everyday stuff, grocery shopping, getting the kids out of the house and all that fun stuff. So I think that's pretty much all I have left to talk for today. Thank you so much for coming. If, um, if you like, then like, and subscribe, tell your friends. Um, and I hope to see you guys in about two weeks. Bye.